Hey, I'm Roland with Mobile Geeks, and what we have right here are the two flagships from the two Korean companies that are vying for the crown in the smartphone market. So for one, we have the Galaxy S5 from Samsung, as we all know it, and the new and pretty impressive LG G3 that has just been announced in London today. It's getting kind of early, as you can see. It's like 2 in the morning, but I still want to push keeping the, making those videos for you guys and yeah I'm just gonna try and run through some of the major differences between the two devices and give you an impression of how they compare so the first and most obvious thing for sure is the size so if you look at these two guys from right straight from the front you'll see the main difference in screen size so that 4.5 inches is definitely adding a lot of space on the screen on the G3 but um, that doesn't mean it's way bigger than the S5 actually because if you put these two devices on top of each other, other you will see that the G3 is only well that's about three millimeters longer and well just about two or one or two millimeters wider um, it's a bit thicker, it's 8.9 millimeters, while the S5 is actually 8.1 millimeters. Um, but LG has once again proven that they're really able to, to, to build really compact devices, cramming this huge screen into a very, very compact form factor and keeping those bezels very thin. So if you look really close, you'll see that the bezel on the screen on the uh, G3 is definitely a bit smaller than on the S5 right here and another major difference on the front that's for sure is also that Samsung is still using capacitive touch buttons and their physical home button while LG is switching or has been switching to these on-screen buttons at least since the Nexus 4 already but let's talk about the screen a bit more. So what LG is doing here is they're the first major manufacturer using a 2K display. So this guy actually has a TFT screen that is running at a full 2560 by 1440 pixels. And that is definitely a lot more pixels crammed into this screen than on the Full HD panel on the Galaxy S5. Um, it is a super crisp and super... Uh, stylish screen it's also very bright it's not as bright as on the s5 but it's definitely a decent screen and you won't be able to uh, discern any any pixels on that LG screen right here uh, it's also a TFT compared to the Super AMOLED on the Galaxy S5 so they both have their advantages and disadvantages but they're still both very awesome screens and I would actually prefer the 2k screen on the G3 because that is definitely an awesome screen I mean like there's no no way that I can see any pixels or whatever and it's got good colors they're using a toned down color scheme scheme that is not as um, well colorful let's call it that uh, as on the S5 for example but that's definitely one of the best screens I've seen so far Talking about the cameras, we have a 16 megapixel camera on the Galaxy S5 while the G3 is using a 13 megapixel camera, so they're keeping the same resolution as on the G2, but they have improved the sensor and it is supposed to be uh, able to take better pictures. Um, they, I think they said something about having improved the light, light leakage problems and stuff from the G2 and also a major difference, which is an advantage of the uh, G3 is that this guy has an optical image stabilizer while the S5 comes without that and they have to use software to stabilize photos while you're taking them so that's definitely a disadvantage. Um, we have to see how that compares in more in-depth testing later on. Um, what's interesting too on the cameras is that this is using a typical optical um, autofocus on here. It's a very fast one though, so the S5 is supposed to be able to focus within 0.3 seconds while the new G3 actually has a laser autofocus. So this guy up here is throwing out laser beams in kind of a cone shape so it re 
measures the time that it takes for the light to come back to the sensor and that way they're able to make the camera focus within I think, I think they said something like 276 milliseconds so that, that's definitely a very very fast autofocus and it's even faster than on the S5 um, the flashes are both or this is actually a dual color uh, flash while this guy should also have one of these dual co dual um, color flashes uh, while the S5 has its button on the sides and on well on both sides in this case the G3 is sticking to LG's concept of having the buttons on the back so we have these rear keys back here these got, uh, two buttons on, on around the power button in the middle are for volume so up and down volume marker right there and a metallic um, power button in the middle the speakers on the two devices are pretty much in the same position um, if you're wondering why this uh, G3 actually is making all those noises it's because it's the um, knock code stuff that is activating the device all the time so it keeps just registering uh, touches when I hold the devices like this um, the S5 has a speaker down here and the G3 has a speaker down here but this guy is supposed to have a 1.5 watt amp in there and a 1 watt speaker so we'll see how the sound compare, compares on these two while we're at it you can see down here that the S5 as we all know has its USB 3 port right there and it's waterproof while the G3 is splash proof but definitely not waterproof you do not want to put this into any water because this will definitely destroy the device and you only get a micro USB port LG actually said they don't want to screw up the design by using one of those huge wide USB 3 micro uh, ports as soon as the new standard port is more popularized they will switch to that that's what the designers said at the launch event in London also you have the headset jack on the bottom uh, bottom on the G3 while you have it on top on the S5 right here um, talking about the back of the two devices you'll see that Samsung uses its faux leather well kind of a yeah people have been making jokes about this back cover right so it's a pretty sturdy back cover that will probably withstand scratches pretty well and fend off fingerprints pretty good but LG has switched to a new method of co coating its back cover right here so we're not uh, they're not employing a metal cover on the G3 but they're now using a plastic bag that could still be taken off um, but they're coating it with a metal mixture or a metal film that's what they said uh, to get this kind of um, metallic look and feel it's not as cold as metal but uh, there's small rifts right here I have a white, wor white version right here so it's pretty hard to see on the camera that this actually has a structure on the back as if it was brushed aluminum uh, and it really feels like that too because you have these small groves in the back of the device right here spec wise they're pretty much the same devices or close to each other at least um, the LG G3 will actually come out in a 2 gig and 16 gig flash version and also a 3 gig and 32 gig version this is actually the Korea model um, that has 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of flash storage while the S5 is still sticking with 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of flash storage at least in the base model and you can't and you don't have any model that has more RAM than those 2 gigs they're both running Android 4.4.2 KitKat employing different um, interfaces LG has uh, modded their their icons and redesigned them but and added a couple of features but it's not as heavily modded and skinned as on the Galaxy S5 where pretty much everything has been modified and yeah Samsung is well known for its um, fiddling around with the Android interface while LG is actually keeping it pretty close to stock Android but using different uh, icons but most of the stuff off the interface is pretty much the same they're employing their own widgets and stuff but they haven't modified the, the, the lower parts of the device 
as heavily as Samsung does on its S5. The Galaxy S5 weighs in at 146 grams, I think, maybe 143, I can't really remember. Uh, and LG actually manages to pull off a very impressive trick right here because they have they have 0.5 inches more screen size while keeping the weight very far down because this guy only weighs 149 grams, so it's a very light phone that is still very uh, well big. And big is another thing I want to talk about. This smartphone has a 3,000 milliampere hour battery, while the S5 only has a 2,800 milliampere hour battery. So you get a bigger battery on the G3 II. In the end, they will probably show pretty much the same performance and also battery runtime because although the G3 has a bigger battery and they're employing some smart uh, power managing management technology on the screen the super high resolution on the uh, G3 probably will in the end result in a bit more uh, a bit higher power draw so they will both make it through the day I guess but uh, we'll see about that later so that's just been a quick and very very shallow uh, comparison of the two flagship smartphones from LG, so this is the G3, the new one, and the Samsung Galaxy S5 has already been out for a while. Uh, we don't know anything about the pricing on the G3, though. Uh, I'm guessing we're talking about 599 USD for the 2 gig and 16 gigs of flash storage version on the G3, which would result in a pretty much same price um, way of pricing compared to the S5, but people in the US are always buying these on contract, so... Yeah, we'll see how that works out in the end internationally. Uh, it also depends on where you buy these devices. Um, there's probably going to be a couple of regions where you only can get the 2 gig and 16 gig flash storage version of the G3, uh, while the 3 gig version is probably confined to countries like Korea and other Asian countries and select Western markets, but LG hasn't said anything about that yet. So the G3 is coming out in June, at least in, in uh, every other country except for Korea, because in Korea it's already on sale from next week. So yeah, that's been, again, a quick look at the Galaxy S5 and the G3 from LG. I was Roland with Mobile Geeks. See you later. Bye. <laughs>